The nation is mourning today after 19 children and two teachers were shot and killed in an elementary school in Texas Tuesday. In the aftermath of one of the deadliest shootings and the deadliest school shooting since Sandy Hook, parents and children are now navigating how to deal with the fear and trauma that follows these tragedies. Jessica Glass Kandorsky is a school psychologist and chair of the School Psychology at the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, Jessica, thanks so much for joining us on this difficult day. When we talk to children about mass shootings, certainly a, a difficult subject to broach with a child, how do, you, how do you find the balance between telling them the truth and being real with them and also not instilling in them uh, uh, you know, a, a sense of fear and uh, being afraid to go to school? really hard i think as parents because we have to be authentic with what it is we are feeling right now and we are feeling grief we are feeling trauma we're feeling fearful when we speak to our kids we want to make sure that they feel four things that they feel safe that they feel they have some stability or routine that they feel connected and that they have some agency but I think it's also important that we make sure that we as parents feel that as well, because we need to be able to give that to our kids in order to communicate that to them. So the first thing is letting them know that they are safe, that there are steps that the school is taking, that there are adults that are around them that are ensuring that they are safe that there's predictability in their routine, that we try to keep things the same as much as we can, that they feel connected to us, to the school, that they can ask us questions. When they come home from school today, ask them if you haven't discussed it already, what have you heard? Um, have you heard anything? How are you feeling? Keep those lines of communication open. Be truthful with them, but be at a developmentally appropriate level. You're going to speak to a eight-year-old a lot different than you're going to speak to a 13-year-old. So being developmentally appropriate with what you tell them, but also asking what they've heard so you can clear up any misinformation. And then aspects of agency and hope. So some of your older kids are going to want to know what they can do in order to ensure that they feel safe. So talking to them about what they want to get involved in, what they want to do more research in, ways that um, they could help towards preventing something like this from happening again. Yeah, and I imagine, you know, parents are also competing against all the 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 noise out there that, that children are absorbing, whether it's from television, from uh, their peers, uh, you know, kids at a much younger age now have phones and can get uh, information from their phones. So, I mean, what, what advice do you have for, for parents, you know, trying to navigate that, the, the, all, the, all the stuff that they're not able to get to their children first and tell them about, that they, that they have to hear from, you know, the outside world. What advice do you have for, for parents on, on that front? Uh, as, as that can also be, you know, something that, that makes kids afraid to, to, to go to school. Yeah, I think we have to acknowledge that they will know. If you have a child that is school age, they will know something. So always ask them what they do know, and this way you can clear up any misinformation. When I heard about this yesterday, I was quite certain that my 13-year-old upstairs may have already found out. So asking them, what have you heard? Um, they'll, they'll tell you, they'll tell you. And then this way you can clear up any of that misinformation. Also acknowledging your own feelings. So yes, I feel sad. I'm feeling grief. I am just feeling a whole lot of emotions regarding this because they will know and they will pick up. So it's not easy. It, it's not enough to just pretend that you aren't feeling a certain way. Your kids will know. And if you don't tell them, they'll create a story. And in a lot of ways, their story could be inaccurate. So letting them know, here are the reasons why I'm experiencing grief. And here are the things that I'm going to do to try and cope with this in appropriate ways. Difficult, but certainly important things to do. Jessica Glass-Kandorsky, thanks so much for your advice.